Good morning to everyone. We're excited to be with you guys today. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, sharing on intentionally build 2020. And uh, so before we get started, you know, John and I and our team would just like to wish you a happy new year. Uh, it's exciting to uh, jump on an early morning call on a Saturday, the first Saturday of the year to, to really address and plan for this upcoming year. So, uh, so we're excited to be with you guys. We are uh, looking forward to the next 60 to 75 minutes of providing as much value to help impact your 2020. Uh, and uh, today's format is going to be very much of a discussion between John and I around some of the things that we've done to build our upcoming years uh, and things that we've done over the last you know, 20 to 40 years, uh, 20 for me and probably 35 to 40 for John. Um, and we're, we're just excited to be with you. Um, and John, John, are you there on the online? All right, hold on one second. Let's make sure he's on. John, can you hear us? There I go. Yeah, I can. All right, perfect. Awesome. All right, so uh, so we're we're excited to be with you. We're going to jump right in, and we're going to use the next sixty to seventy-five minutes to hopefully impact your life, uh, help make a, a tremendous impact. Uh, in your 2020. And, um, you know, I, I just want to start with, with um, before we get started, I want to sh share one little quick story. There's, um, uh, many of you know John Maxwell, and one of the things that he consistently says, and he wrote a book called Intentional Living, um, he said this, he said that good intentions is a lot different than being intentionally good. You know, that's the reason why most New Year's resolutions are done by January 15th, because they were, they were, they were good intentions. They were never intentionally good, that those people were not intentionally good. So some of the things we're going to share with you today, we're going to ask you, are they good intentions or are you going to choose to be good, uh, intentionally good in these areas? Um, so before we jump in, John, is there anything you want to share before we discuss, you know, start this discussion? Yeah, uh, I'm just reminded when you talked about the intentions, be intentionally good. And everyone has good intentions. I think everybody wants to go into the new year doing better than they did the year before. And those are all good intentions. And I, I think about the difference between the, the resolution and the commitment. I think I wrote about that recently, where the difference is that a resolution is a very good intention. You resolve to do something you're planning to do, but a commitment is being intentionally good because you're committed to something you have already written down and planned. So there's two different things. So a, a difference between being uh, having good intentions and being intentionally good. The difference between resolution and commitment. Yeah, no, that's good. And you know, as you said that, I, I was thinking of um, studies that I've heard that says that 80% of multimillionaires have a detailed written out business plan but 100% of every billionaire that has ever been interviewed has a detailed business plan. So it's just the, the it, it's interesting how when we put, when we put our thoughts and our intentions to paper, it goes from good intentions to intentionally good. So, uh, yes. so let's jump, let's jump in. Um, th there's one of the things that I, for, for those of you that are business leaders that are on this call uh, and will be listening to it uh, at some point in the future on our recording, there's eight areas that we talk about that we have to be intentionally good, especially in 2020. So, so we call this our master operating system. This is a, this is a, the eight areas of a business that if you're doing well in these eight areas, your, your company most likely is going to have a lot of profit. You're going to have, you're going to have a lot of fulfillment. You're going to find joy in what you're doing. So I just want to, I want to share with those that are on our call today, these eight areas. And then John, maybe we could just have a conversation around that. Um, but these eight areas are vision, language, systems, statistics, people, issues, customer, and glue. So in these eight areas, if we're, go if we're going to make 2020 a great year or hopefully our best year ever, especially in the business context, we're going to really have to focus in these eight areas. So we talk about vision. Where are we going this year? Have you, have you clearly laid out where we're going 
or where you're going in 2020? Does your team know exactly what you're, where you're, where you're looking to go? You know, like, I, I say this all the time in language. I say like every organization has its own language. When, when you bring someone in from another company into your company, or if you're going into another company, if you're, if you're working at an organization, each person brings different language to the table. And that language, you may be saying the same thing, but because you're using different language, it's very hard to connect and understand. What systems? What systems do you have in place? I, John and I talk about systems for freedom all the time. How about people? How, how, do we, how do we intentionally build our people so that we make 2020 our best? Or how do I intentionally build myself? You know, John Maxwell said something that uh, um, a gentleman who, who he had met for uh, many years ago, about 45, 50 years ago, he said to him, he said, John, he said, do you have a personal growth plan? And it changed John's life forever because he didn't. At that time, he was just trying to be good. He had good intentions. And that day when, when the gentleman, Kurt Kampmeyer, um, asked him that question, do you have a personal growth plan, it changed John's life, changed the course of his life. So the question is, do you have a personal growth plan for yourself and those that you lead? And we have statistics. These are, these are the areas, you know, so, some organizations will call them key performance indicators or KPIs. Um, but what are some of these statistics that we have in, you know, in our organization to make sure that we're, bu we're building 2020 intentionally? How do we handle issues? Who's our customer? How do we reach our customer effectively? These are some of the things we're going to be talking about today. And then glue. Uh, we say glue are the things that keep it together. Um, John and I and, my, and our partner, Danielle, which happens to be my wife as well, um, every week with our team, we do a orchestra meeting. And the reason why we call it an orchestra meeting rather than a team meeting is because an orchestra, when the when they're when everyone's playing their role and everyone's hitting their 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 musical instruments at the correct time, the music sounds great. So I think I think of organizations when we think of organizations, we call it glue. But yeah, how how do we work together to make the music sound great? So those are the eight areas. If you're intentional in those eight areas. In this upcoming year, um, this this should make you, your 2020 one of your best years ever. Um, so, John, let's let's start the conversation. Why don't you uh, why don't you just jump in? Okay, uh, looking forward for a new year. Uh, the best way to start, and you really need to know where you are now. So you got to know where you came from. And using an operating master operating system, you still have to have a good handle on where you are. It's where self-awareness comes in. So uh, I think, Chad, we talked about this a lot, where looking back the, the previous year and assess yourself, and how, how did you think you did? And do you have a, a grid that you use to measure how you did the previous year? This way you can measure your goals for next year and the progress you'll make. And by looking back and reflecting, you'll know basically what needs to change. What areas do you want to change? What areas do you want to expand? Or maybe you're doing very well in a certain area, but you want to take it to the next level. So in building intentionally uh, a 2020, having that vision, you know, we have to go back. If we don't know where we came from, then you really don't know where you're going. And that really is the key. What do you need to fix? So being intentional is also being specific. So that's uh, huge. And you and I, Chad, have talked about that quite a bit. Yep. John, can, could you share a little bit about how you reflect? Because you, you, you've been doing it for years and you've been doing it well for years. Um, how do you reflect? And when I say how do you reflect on the previous year, um, the, 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 the structure behind or the system behind it is great. But, but even like, where where do you do your reflection? Do you have a do you have a area that you reflect? Um, how do you get your mindset ready to reflect? Can you kind of share? Because I think as as those that are listening today, as we start building out our 2020, I think that's a very important part. Sure. 
Uh, my favorite place, obviously, is my office at home, my study or my library, whatever you call it. Uh, and I like sitting in there, and it's just the, the atmosphere because I'm surrounded by books, and <laughs> you know, I am about books, and I'm just comfortable. It's my <laughs> library. Uh, I sit in front of my desk. It's a small area. It's a miracle I put all this stuff in here. That's where I am right now. And I'm just comfortable because everything is right here. So toward the end of every year, I use usually the last quarter. I know uh, I know Maxwell does something similar, but he does an amazing thing the final week. And uh, it's sort of uh, where I got it from. And I heard it many, many years ago, back going back to late 80s, early 90s. And it was, I, I think, the early 90s where I sort of copied his you know, to some extent where he said he takes the last week of each year and he takes his calendar and he goes all the way back to January and he goes through every single appointment, every speaking engagement, conversations, business meetings, you name it. He goes through all of it and he assesses how he did. He grades himself on it and then he also looks into, okay, is this something I should continue? And I'm talking about appointments, relationships, uh, business relationships, personal relationships. So he assesses all of that. And I was blown away when I first heard that. And here I am, it's in the, the 1990s, and I was already starting to be intentional, and I already had an idea where I wanted to go. And I thought that's what I need because I was still planning my future, but I never thought about being this intentional looking back. And uh, I didn't do it as thorough as he did because it doesn't work for me. I'll fall asleep here after a while. I mean, he's so intentional. He does the whole week <laughs> from Christmas to New Year's. And he methodically goes through his calendar point by point by point. It's, it's astounding. And uh, I said, you know what? I, I need to do it. But uh, what works for me? And he's, he's all about that. Tweak it so it's yours. It works for you. And so what I did is I take the last quarter. And I'm sort of a slow thinker, observer kind of thing. I have to have things like steep, you know, like tea in a cup. I, I have to do that. So I take the last quarter and I go back and think through. And any teams I work with uh, that I usually give them an assessment of me uh, as their leader. And I ask them to assess me the previous year. And they have a month to do that. And then they give it back to me and I take their recommendations, positive and negative. And uh, so I, I'm relational, relational leader. So they they know there's going to be no negative repercussions. I'm doing it because I need to know they could see what I can. So I take all of that and I take the last quarter and gradually I'll go through my entire year. I'll break it up into quarters and I'll have a sheet in front of me. Usually it's a legal pad and, and I'll just. Uh, just section it off and usually I'll just draw a line in the middle first half second half and then of course each half divided in half again and there are my four quarters and I'll start asking myself okay the successful actions throughout the year and I'll take them quarter by quarter now I assess myself quarterly anyway like for 2020 the first week of April I'm going to be assessing these first three months to, through March 31st so I'm able to take that and still go through the rest of it anyway, because sometimes you change how you view things as you go along. So I'll go back and look at everything, plus my notes, my own assessment. And I'll look at the successful actions I've taken, and I'll ask myself why. Why were they successful? Because I want to know why it succeeded so I can repeat it. Second you know, thing John, I'll do. I think, sorry, I just want to jump in one moment. Um, I, I think sometimes as business leaders, we get so wrapped up in moving forward that we don't spend the time to look at what didn't work or even what did work. You know, I think um, when I think back over my last 20 years, um, there was a point in my career in one of our other companies that we had a tremendous success, but I wasn't able to reproduce it. I wasn't able to keep it year in and year out because we had a great year. But what happened back then is I didn't know why we had a great year. So I think what you're saying is, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying, look back at your year to understand the why, so that the why can then direct your vision. 
Exactly. That, okay. Cause, cause I struggled yeah, with it. If I, if I could be real with everyone that's on the call today, I struggled with it. Uh, many years ago, I had, we had, you know, Danielle and I, in our, one of our companies had a great success and we had a breakthrough year, but I couldn't follow that, follow that up the next year because I didn't truly understand the why of why we had that success. Yeah. And that's important because you want to repeat that. And, uh, and I wasn't one when I started to to repeat it because I look back like it was a mystery. How did I do that? <laughs> you know, sometimes I was more shocked than anybody else. I well, I, I succeeded in that. And uh, so I did. I got that both from Maxwell, also uh, Stephen Covey, and and them and, and others that I gleaned that from them to go back and really get into the why of both your successes and failures. And my unsuccessful actions is the second step I take. And I do the same thing. What are they? And what was the outcome of it? And then the why. And I'll go into why I even made that decision, even though I know why when I made it. But then, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So sometimes you have better uh, insight into why you made a decision. And you sometimes you regret a decision. Well, the idea of getting at the why is so the su- successes you repeat, but the failures you learn from it what not to repeat and yeah. that's so you know, like, and, and that's what maxwell talks about um when he goes back and looks at his calendar it's he's not looking at it just to reflect on what the meeting was and you know i had a great meeting with this person he's looking at the calendar to say okay should i invest more in that relationship should i invest more in that opportunity or should i not even think about that in the next year because it's not going to bear the fruit because it's just not where i want to go it's not where we're looking to go it's not you know we're just not on that path so i i I think the reflection is so important because it shows you where you should be directing your time moving forward um but yeah it's this is a great point I, i absolutely love reflection time. I think, John, you do it better than almost anyone you, I know because I, I even think of Danielle and myself, right? When we're, when we're planning for the upcoming year, I do reflect and I go back and I look, but you're just, you, you by nature, I think, will go through more of the details of the day by day or look at that quarter and really go deep. And I'll just glean some of the, some of the stuff that I, I could take away because I'm more of a strategic person who wants to move forward quicker and you like to kind of glean back and, and observe everything that occurred. So that's why we make a good partnership. That's true. That's true. That's <laughs> it true. really is. <laughs> we, we often joke about this uh, reflecting on stuff and sometimes, Chad, you'll come up with these the sheets and you, you'll just give out as all this data all the way through and, and, this, uh, and it's in your wheelhouse. And, uh, and I don't know many people do it better than you. And you just, you can go look at the sheet and you'll be drilling down on this in some of our meetings for about 30 minutes and really getting into the minutia of all of this. And then are able to draw out these plans and forecast what we should do based on the numbers and based on these things. And, and my joke about it is because we're wired so differently is that you give me that same sheet, you know, and, and I'm asleep in about five minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just not wired that way. So, so I marvel at it when you do it. So, yeah, it, you, so you cool. know, you, you know, I want to, I want to kind of jump to that for a moment because in building 2020 and having it be, you know, one of your best years, it's also important to recognize um, the team that you have. So like one of the things that John, you were just alluding to was we, we, I, I don't try to, I don't try to make you someone you're not. You don't try to make me someone I'm not. And we, re, we respect each other. We understand the uh, uniqueness that each of us bring to the table. And, and you know, like one of the things that I say all the time, what, what, when, when people see us together, whether it's at our Lions Club masterminds or, or whether it's at a speaking engagements that we're doing or team building events for organizations, right? Um, one of the things that I always comment is, is that. John, I, I really believe that you're one of the best writers I know. And, and, and when, I, when I say that, I'm saying that humbly, but I'm, I'm saying I really believe that you, 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 so many people have been impacted by the articles and the things that you write. So why would I want to keep you in operations? Why, why would we want you working on operations when you're a phenomenal communicator, you're a phenomenal writer? Let's keep you doing what you do best, right? And I think um, in 2020, for those of you that are listening, I think that 
the organizations that are going to truly thrive in this upcoming year, they're going to be thriving because they're working in their area of their strength and delegating in their area of their weakness. So that so that's one of the things to intentionally build 2020 is we need to be working more in our area of strength than our area of weakness. And when, if, if I look back over my career over the last 17, 18 years, however long it's been, I spent a lot of time in my area of my weakness. I spent a lot of time. You know, one of the things that we decided this year was I was going to spend more time in vision, strategy, and teaching. And just just already, you know, we're 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 literally three days into we're three days into the year, and we've already done two team building events and one national, which we're on today, a national live virtual discussion all around teaching. So I think that the people that are that are listening to this is the organizations and your organization will thrive most. If you're air, if you're operating in your strength, and um, I, re I remember John when we were down in Atlanta with John Maxwell and his team, and they had a podcast with Marcus Buckingham, and Marcus Buckingham was talking about um, the, actually uh, Mark Cole, which is John's CEO, had asked Marcus about what does it look like for someone to perform at a high level, like what, like how does that happen? And and Marcus said this, he said. Organization, people that perform at high levels, one, focus on their strengths more than their weaknesses, and second, observe what excellence looks like. So to intentionally build 2020, I think there's two things that we need to be looking at. One, staying in our strengths. Two, is observing other people that are doing what we want to do in our strength area, not in our weaknesses. Because our weaknesses, we can only become mediocre at best. But in our strength area, observing people who are doing it at such a high level because excellence is caught, it's not taught. That's true. Big you know, big. and, you know, I, I think about it. We were around John and his team for over a month uh, in, uh, what was it, October and November. And the stuff that Danielle and I caught it wasn't because John was teaching it. It was because we were in close proximity and, and we were able to observe how him and his team operate. So when we brought that back to our organization, it just propelled us to a whole nother level, not because we, he was teaching us. It was because we were observing what excellence looked like, which is, which is key. So um, mm -hmm. I, I want to jump into this conversation, John. I want to share this with the, our listeners and then you and I can kind of have a conversation around this. Um, a lot of the times we talk about use uh, we talk about something called rocks. It's R O C K S rocks. So I want to give this metaphor because I think it'll be helpful for those that are on our call today. And then John, let's just let's have a deeper conversation around this because I think this is one of the topics that we're going to talk about today that truly can make an an impact for those listening. Right. The um w w when we talk about rocks, I want to give you an example. Picture a bucket. So picture a bucket and picture, you know, one of those baseball buckets that are like a five gallon. Uh, sometimes you put the su sunflower seeds in them. Um, but picture, you know, there's a five gallon bucket and you take some big rocks. Maybe you take 10 or 15 rocks and you put it into that bucket. You filled up the bucket to the top. Now, is that bucket filled to its maximum capacity? No because there's air in between all of those rocks, right? So then what we do is we go take pebbles and we pour all these pebbles into the bucket and it surrounds and it fills in some of the open area. But then we go take some sand and we put sand into it and the sand fills in all of the additional air and open spots. And then most people would say, wow, yeah, now that bucket is filled to the top and it's complete. But then you take water and you take water and you throw a, a gallon or two of water into that bucket. And you're like, where is this water going? Because the water is finding all of the areas that there is not that there is not something there and it's filling it in. The reason why we're giving this metaphor is, is for this. Is that in 2020. We need to have rocks these big major things that we want to accomplish with our organization because 
the the sand and the the water those are the those are the day to day things that happen in business those are the things that have to get done we got to pay payroll we have to pay our bills we have to have a team meeting those are the major things those are things that get done regardless we got to deal with this you know employee co- um conflict or we got to in- deal with this customer problem those will happen in our normal course of day but what are the major rocks that we want to get accomplished in 2020 to really significantly move the ball so the things that we talk about is identifying what are your major rocks in 2020 what are the major things that you want to accomplish and some of them will be business wise and then some of them will be prof- uh, will be personal so but what are those major rocks and then we always talk about breaking down your year so if we want to have a great 12 months, which is a whole full year, how do we have a great full year? We have 12 great months. How do we have 12 great months? We have 52 great weeks. How do we have 52 great weeks? We have 365 great days. So John, I'd like to have a conversation around that because I think that would be so powerful and impactful for those that are listening today is, how do we identify the rocks? What are those rocks that should be, maybe we should be looking at? And then how do we be intentional on a month-to-month basis, week-to-week basis? And in some instances, instances depending on the size of the organization, some of the people should be held accountable on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think to your point, Chad, the toughest person to lead, and any leader said, no, Maxwell says it a lot, the ter- toughest purpose of person to lead is ourselves. So when it comes to the the rocks and the deciding which ones and then being intentional for planning the, the rocks, your big ticket items, what, what are your highest priorities? And the value you place on it that will determine what, what priority they are. And usually I try to have like four uh four zones if you will if i can use that and and the highest priority actually is one priority one then you know priority two three and four and one is a must it's a non-negotiable so it's a matter of going back to what you said earlier about your strengths and the the reason it's so important here you know it's okay to start prioritizing how to be intentional and how to have the, the these big rocks first. What are the rocks that you need to plan first? Because those are priorities. But you have to take a step back first and really look into who you are. Because all of the planning, if it's outside your purpose, you, you, it's, you're going to waste a year. And I've done that early on. Where uh, when I first started doing this in the 1980s, I started by having his, you know, great schedule throughout the year. And always, I was using day timers back then and, and stuff. I still do. I still use one. But uh, I had all the things scheduled, but I was actually scheduling things for the sake of getting things on the schedule. And I did that for a couple of years without even understanding, you know, big rocks, big ticket items and stuff like that. It wasn't until uh, I read uh, Covey's book, uh, Seven Habits. And that's when I, it hits me. And, you know, you go to his second book, which I love probably more than the first book, First Things First. And in that book, First Things, he talks about the big rocks. But it has to be tied to who you are. So the first big rock for me, you know, it's hindsight. So the things I've learned is going to be personal. The second biggest rock that has to go into my schedule is my family. And that's my challenge for this year. And uh, Chad, you and I talked about this, where this year being probably going to be our busiest year. And I realized early on, okay, that's going to be a major commitment. So now there's things that might have been a big rock in 2019 that probably is going to be maybe secondary in 2020. So it goes from that first zone, it's, it's going to be moved to the second zone. But one of the things I did was made my family for 2020 has to be a higher priority. 
And in assessing uh, 2019, I saw some areas where, and I, you know, I shared this with you uh, on occasion, Chad, where uh, yep. mm-hmm. I might have been too busy. We're working too late, you know, and, and my wife would, would say, she goes, you know, we, you read constantly. And I read anyway. So as you say, but you were reading until like 11 o'clock at night, you know, and I was like, yeah, yeah. But after about the third time she said it, it's like, you know, duh, <laughs> you know, there's, there's something wrong here. So I realized that, that I had to rein that in and reschedule how I read because she's more important than my business is more important than anything I'm going to read. So for 2020, that's a change because your greatest strength is going to come from your family. So, I mean, I hope that illustrates the, the point. And that's one of the changes I made in 2020 in scheduling 2020. It's more time with my family. And the reason I said that, I'll say this real quick and then I'll turn it over to you, Chad, is that uh, Zig Ziglar said it many years ago. He's, he's talked to many business people, phenomenally successful business people, but some of them lost their families. Uh, you know, they, they sacrificed their families on the altar of business, if you will. And the, the, the problem with it, he says, is not that they were incompetent. The problem was they were so focused on the future that they weren't living in the present. And that's what it was. It was all about, you know, what are you going to start, you know, go play ball with your kids. What are you going to do? All right, you know what? I don't have the time right now, but, you know, as soon as they get out of school, they want to get out of school, then it's day camp, and then it's other meetings, and then it's the fall. All right, well, it's the fall. Well, they're starting school. And that cycle goes all the way until you're back where you came from. And he says, he told the guy, he says, your problem is because you're always thinking ahead, so much so you're living in the future, that when it comes to the present, you're never anywhere. Mm. And that resonated you know, with me. That's, so that's to your point. And that your strength, your greatest strength is going to be your family. So you got to try You know, I, I think of that. And actually, it's funny. I, I haven't share, share, uh, shared this with you. But Danielle and I just started. Um, for those of you who don't know who Danielle is, she is my business partner and my wife. And we've been at this, this thing called business and un- being an entrepreneur for probably close to a decade and a half together. And some people say, I don't know how you guys work together. And I say, I don't know how we don't do it together because this is just too hard to do by ourselves. <laughs> but um, but but one of the things, John, to your point is, um, and I didn't share this with you, but so I'm sharing this now with everyone who's going to hear this. But Danielle and I started uh, January 1st. We started this, this thing called uh, Dare to Love. It's a, a 365 daily devotional. And her and I are going day by day through it because I, to your point, And this is where, you know, being intentional with our upcoming year, I know that 2020 is going to be very, very, um, very intense in a good way. Tremendous opportunities. But I know that if I don't put, if I don't spend that time with my wife, if I don't, if if we're not intentional with connecting, we'll have a, we'll have a great business for a year and then we'll be fixing up all the damage for the next seven. So uh, to your point, it's, it's important. But um, I couldn't agree more, you know, being intentional around our personal life, around our professional life. Um, you know, I, I want to speak to this, John, for a moment. Sure. Because I think a lot of the times with many of the business leaders uh, that we work with, a lot of the times when I ask them this question, they look at me like a deer in headlights. And I say to them, I say, when are you scheduling your vacation dates? for the upcoming year, they're like, I don't know. I said, if you don't know, when, how are you getting away? Not only how are you getting away, how do you stay motivated for 12 months not knowing when you're going to be recharging your battery? So in intentionally building 2020, for those of you that are listening, I'd encourage you, put the time in the calendar of when you're getting away. You know, we've been doing this for years. Um, we work hard. We're, when we're in, we're in. We're fully in. There, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, mixing. If we're with our family, we're with our family. If we're with at work, we're at work, right? But one of the things that I've been doing and Danielle has been doing for years is blocking out what when our vacation dates are. Yep. I I can tell you when our vacation dates are for 2020. I don't know where we're going. That's a different story. But I know when we're going. I like that. <laughs> right? So yep. so I know when we're going. 
and I know that we're going um, in September. I know that we're taking some time off in July. We're taking some time off in August. Um, and I know typically around the end of the year, we take some time off, but I know when we're going. So for, 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 for those of you listening, I would encourage you guys to put in time of when you're getting away. Yep. And a lot of business leaders, a lot of entrepreneurs, they say, oh, I have so many responsibilities. And I look at them and I say to them, and I'm just very honest with them, which is probably the reason why they keep hiring us. <laughs> but I'm very honest with them. I say, I say this to them. Do you think that I'm not that busy? Yeah, that's true. That is true. It, busy is a state of mind. And, and that's the difference between being proactive and reactive, right? Um, proactive tells the time where to go. Reactive, the time tells you where you're going. That's right. You become a and, and yeah, and you can't build success based on being reactive. Because, right. you know, I, I think it was Andrew Carnegie, John, that said this. So the president of the United States, it was either Andrew Carnegie or Rockefeller. I'm not sure which one. But the president of the United States calls them, calls one of them and says this. says, we have an emergency. And they're speaking to, uh, I think it was Andrew Carnegie's assistant, right? So Andrew Carnegie's assistant runs into his office and says, Andrew, we have the president of the United States that's on the call. Um, you know, the, it is a, an emergency. He needs to speak to you. And the words that he said back to her was so impactful. He said, what constitutes an emergency on his behalf does not constitute an emergency on my behalf. Yes. Please tell the president I will call him back later when I'm done doing what I'm doing. Now, mm -hmm. now that is as intentional as you can be because if we're, if we're not going to value who we are in our time, others are not going to value who we are in our time. So, That's so right. In building 2020, we have to be more proactive with our time, proactive with our relationships, proactive with how we're using our time. And it doesn't mean being rude. It means being intentional. So I just, I really wanted to share that yeah. because most people say, I can't block out vacation dates. I can't take four weeks off. I can't take three. I can't take six weeks off. Whatever the then whatever the time is. If you can't do that in your business, then you're doing something wrong. That's right. Because that's right. Getting away to charge your batteries. It's like your cell phone. Picture picture trying to use your cell phone for for 365 days without charging it. You're dead after one day. After one day, your phone dies. It's the same thing with us as humans. If we don't get proper sleep, if we don't get a way to charge our batteries, how are we going to perform at the level that we have to perform at for the people that we work with, for the people, our clients, for our employees, for our family? You know, I, yeah. I, I, there's, there's, there's two things I don't compromise. I don't compromise my sleep and I don't compromise my vacation days. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that I may not get away for six months, but I know when I'm getting away. And then when I get away, it may be for two weeks or some. I, last year, John, we got away for the whole month of July, but we scheduled it right. in January. So Danielle and I went on a, a road trip. We traveled all up and down the eastern seaboard, right? But yep. we planned that in, in December of the previous year, knowing that we were going to get away in July. We scheduled everything around that. That's right. That's the big rock. That was a, that was a major rock for us personally because we, we, we never did a whole month. We've done two weeks. We've done two and a half weeks. But this was a way for us to get away, and we had to be intentional with doing that. So I just want to encourage everyone. You know, there's so many books that say sleep two hours, and that's the way you're going to be successful. And, and I really believe that if you do that for a long period of time, not only are you not going to be successful, you're going to have a tremendous health problems. You're going to have tremendous relational problems. Um, everything you eventually, it'll all, because it's being built on a house of cards. So eventually yeah. it all comes crumbling down. You know, there's a reason why, <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't know where everyone on the call stands, but for me, you know, I have a faith in God. There's a reason why God requires us to sleep. 
so that we have the ability to recover and recharge ourselves. <laughs> you need those batteries recharged for sure. Yep. Yep. But, the, but, but to your point, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. But to your point, well, we did this, you and I did this in December. We both already had our vacations planned. And my, you know, my vacations are already planned. And, and we go away in the spring uh, and then in the fall and then once again in December. And uh, so we do that. But you and I had the phone call and we went from January through December of 2020. And we planned the monthly meetings and then we planned the, the time to prep for them. We planned several other things and we did that in December. Remember that call? And we went through all of it. Yeah. And there was a couple of times where we couldn't do a, a certain thing because either you're on vacation or I was on vacation. And we were talking about something that's going to be eight, nine months out. We already knew. And one more point to this about if you want to really be intentional with my wife and I, because we, we work uh, six days a week and Sunday happens to be a work day. So it's not like we could take the weekend off. So a Monday is our day where normally people take a Sunday, go to the park, do what they want to do. So we take Monday and chattel test to this where don't call me for business. Don't call me for anything on Monday. It's my, my wife and I, that's our day. Sort of like a date day instead of a night. We just do the whole day and we do absolutely nothing that pertains to business. I won't even consider it. And that's 52 times, 52 quality days just for my wife. Why? Because if you're not in order at home, you're not going to be in order anywhere else because your priorities will be upside down. So that's to your point, Chad, with being intentional with your family. And I remember that when you went away for July. That was why, you know, by the way, for those of you listening, every once in a while, I'd call in and give us a, a report of what's happening. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'd spend a, I'd spend a half hour in the morning, you know, just kind of making sure everything's running, you know, smoothly. And so I wasn't totally detached for, for 30 days. That's right. But if I worked a total of five hours that month, that was a lot. But my per point being, though, is, is that we have to be proactive with our calendar because um, if, if, if we're really intentional with our calendar in 2020, a lot of the things that we say we can't do really is because we haven't been effective with the utilization of our time. And, and I said this, John, you probably remember this. We were at a, um, we were at our communication boot camp, and we were talking about, uh, someone was saying about how difficult it is sometimes with working with people and hiring the wrong people and how much stress it creates. And, and, and I, I said to this person, I said, <laughs> I said, when we hire the wrong people, We don't have enough resources to reward the good people. Yes, that's right. So, so think about that. Everything, everything in our life is around stewardship. So, in stewardship, meaning being a, being really responsible of the things that we have, and making sure that we're using it wisely, right? So, mm -hmm. when, when we're good stewards of our time, guess what happens? We get more time. When we're good stewards of our health, guess what happens? We get better health. When we're good stewards of relationships, guess what happens? The relationships get better. And the things that we're not good steward of gets worse. So in, yep. so in 2020, in, in, in building an intentional 2020, what are the things that we really need to be good stewards of or, or, or manage well so that we can have effectiveness in that area? Yep. You know, um, I, I want to talk a little bit about this, um, John. Sure. So those business leaders that are on, which almost every person that's on this call is a business leader, either they own the company or they work for a major company or they work for a, you know, a, a company that, you know, is a, a family ran business, but almost every person that's on there and will listen falls into one of those three categories. Mm -hmm. And the thing I want to, the thing I want to talk about, and we, I actually spoke about this at one of our team building events that we did January 2nd. Um, we had a team building event with one of our organizations that we coach and we spoke about success consciousness. So I just want to, I want you guys to write that down. Those of you that are listening, write down success consciousness. 
And the reason why I'm really going very slow on this one is because if we're going to build 2020 and we're going to be intentional around it, then we need to clearly know what success looks like. You see, when, when we know what success looks like, then we can, when, when we see it, we can say, that's it, I need it. But if we don't know what success looks like, and I want, I'm going to give a real clear example of it. If we don't know what success looks like, then it's very hard to recognize what it looks like. So, so, so this is the example. As we were planning for this upcoming year, we spoke about, John and I and Danielle and our team, we spoke about how many customized coaching clients do we want? How many mastermind clients do we want? How many speaking engagements do we want? How many leadership assessments do we want to have sold this year? Now, in years past, if we, if we were to go back 10, 12, 13 years ago, I would have put, when, when I was planning for the upcoming year, I would have put a dollar amount, whatever that number is. X dollar amount was my goal. And the problem with putting a dollar amount as a goal is that you never find that dollar amount just walking around. So part of being success conscious is really saying, okay, that dollar amount, whatever that dollar amount is for your organization or your division, that dollar amount is X. But how does that correlate into success this year? And as an example, it's how, you know, it's 10 uh, customized coaching clients. It's uh, X amount of mastermind clients, X amount of speaking engagements. And we, we actually created a document. It's a one page document that lays it out with all of the boxes for those opportunities. So now when we're out and we're in the community and we're in the business world or wherever we're speaking, we, we know that we're looking to fill in these opportunities and we call those we, we call this our opportunity list for 2020. So what I want to encourage everyone on today's call to do is create a document that lays out where your opportunities are. So I'll, I'll give you an example. I was sitting down with a real estate agent, a high, high level real estate agent, helping them plan out their 2020. And when we were going through a conversation uh, around where are your opportunities? And they said, well, you know, this is the amount of revenue we did and we want to do more revenue uh, this upcoming year. But I said to this person, I said, that's great. But where is the revenue coming from? Is it coming from commercial sales? Is it coming from residential sales? Is it coming from commercial leasing? Is it coming from any co uh, consulting work that you're doing? And what we did was, is we created a game plan of how we're going to get to that number. So if you remember when we started our conversation earlier, we were talking about that 80% of multimillionaires have a detailed business plan. 100% of billionaires have a, a detailed business plan. Well, when we, when we take down the goals that we want and then we break it down to exactly how we're going to do it, what we've done is we've just increased our probability of winning. And yes. in 2020, I want to encourage everyone to recognize how to increase your probability of winning. Because I don't know any, any, John, I think you would agree. I don't think we know any business leader that says, I don't want to win or says, I just want to put, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to put money into this company, but I'm not expecting a return on my investment. I think everyone we've worked with and everyone I've ever met is expecting to be successful. They want to be successful. They want to win. Yep. But there are certain things that we do that we can do that increases our probability of winning. Yeah. What I doubt. Want, you, uh, want to share a little on that? Well, it goes back to in being intentional. And it, it really isn't about the number. Success, success uh, Maxwell says it a lot, and many said it before him, but success isn't a destination. You know, I'll be successful. No, you need to be successful today. So success is a journey. We're only successful uh, to the degree we are successful today. Because yesterday you can't change. It's, it's gone. And tomorrow's not here yet. So we only have today. So we have to live in, in the day. So in planning out 
uh, more than the numbers. It, it, being successful really is about people. And that's one of the things that a lot of uh, business owners sometimes miss. And, and I'm amazed that they're, that they're out there, that they miss the point about people not realizing, I think it was uh, Peter Drucko said it, that, that you know, business is about people. It, it, without the people, you're out of business. So in looking at those big rocks and of doing more in 2020, it's understanding who you're adding value to and where are your strengths you know put those now in, into the, the business plan here and who's your who's your market where you go back and you're going to assess where have been the successes in, in what area what's your target area what's your target group and you know that that's where you add the most value so the first step is how can I be better in 2020 adding more value in that area? That's the personal side because you're going to bring your best self to your clients, your customers, and you want to be better in 2020 and you're better in, than in 2019. And now what you're doing is you're targeting those areas that you are going to throw all of your best selves, your whole team into. And you are going to give your target audience, if you will, I'll use that. You're going to use, you're going to throw at them all of your best selves, the greatest amount of value you've ever given anybody up to 2020. You're going to give it to them, but you have to know where your wheelhouse is. And that's what we did. Where, where are those streams of income coming from? Well, your highest streams of income, obviously, are the areas where you're the most value. So think value that you're adding, because if you do that and you put the people as your big rocks and knowing what sector they're coming from, then you throw yourself into that area mostly. You'll get it from other areas, but there, there's your wheelhouse. And you throw your best self in there most of your time there. And what we have found out, and, and I've seen this and I've read it so many times, that the money, the numbers, takes care of itself. To be successful, be successful with the people adding the most value to them, and the numbers will always be there. John, I want, I want to add on top of that, too, because um, you, you're dead on point. And I, I think there's um, one thing that I didn't realize back in the day, many years ago, uh, we, we had a coach that we were working with years ago, John, and, I, and I've mentioned them to you, um, that many years ago, we, Danielle and I had this coach, and he said, prosperity follows value, meaning yes. success follows creating value for someone. But this is the thing that, that we missed. Because we thought it was valuable, we were doing it and trying to, and trying to provide that value or that service to someone. But just because you think it's valuable doesn't mean the person on the other side is finding it valuable. Right. And for, for a while, um, for a period of probably two and a half years, we were not, we were not understanding why we weren't, we weren't having this, the level of success we believe we should have had. And I, I think I started in the beginning of our call, I was talking about not being able to understand um, success. Um, remember I mentioned not being able to repeat it. So we had this great year, but we weren't able to repeat it the next year. And, and partly part of that reason, reason was, is what we thought the clients wanted and what they actually wanted were two different things. So we kept right. on providing something that they didn't find valuable. So true ultimate abundant success can't happen unless the people on the other side are finding what you're providing to them is valuable. Well, it's the same thing also at, um, with your teams. You know, a lot of the times we talk about working with teams, right? The people that you lead and we're like, well, you know, be there for them, develop them. And people come back and they're like, yeah, but it's not working. Sometimes it's not working because you're not finding what's valuable to that person. Um, well, one of the things lately I've been telling uh, teams to use as a free tool is the five love, five love language test. I think it's the website, I think is five love language test.com. But we've been, I've been sharing this with them and saying, maybe you have some of the people on your team complete this. It's just, it's a quick three minute free three to four minute test. 
But what it does is it tells you what they find valuable. So right. are, they, are they an acts of service person, meaning they like when someone does something for them? Are they a person who, who really likes quality time? Are they a person who really needs words of affirmation to encourage them? So if we're the leader in 2020, as we build an intentional year, if we're leading people, we need to understand who the people are that we're leading and then understand what motivates them and how to connect with them. Because our job gets easier when we understand who we're working with and how to connect with them and then how to motivate them. Yes. So I just wanted to share that because I know you were mentioning you know, some stuff around that, uh, about, around value. And just because you find it valuable does not mean that the people that you're working with find it valuable. That's what makes the world go around because we're all different. Yep. Yep. And that, that speaks to, as far as the company, you know, personally, we're talking about knowing our strengths, functioning in our strengths. And it's, it's more important for our organizations to only function in their strengths. You know, you can improve on your weaknesses. And this is a, a principle I learned from experience. And it's a tough experience, so don't go through it. But, you know, your strengths are the areas where obviously you're good at your high competency areas. But they're also the areas that you're most passionate about. Because they come natural to it. So it's the same thing with your business. Where your business is naturally strong in certain areas and you have to know it. And, and when you have all the right players on your team, when your company is functioning in its strength, everybody is passionate about moving forward. And you can improve on your weaknesses and that makes you a better, well-rounded person and a better, well-rounded company, but you will never be as passionate in those weaknesses as you are in your strengths. So it's really important for companies to know who they are, what they're good at, and who they're adding the most value to, because that's where your strength is, and that's where you'll always be most passionate. And it becomes a self-feeding cycle of motivation because that, that charge you get at the end of the year, seeing that you hit those numbers because you stayed in your strength and you added so much value to those people in your target area and the feedback proves it the numbers prove it and it's just so motivating let's do it again next year but take it to the next level that's awesome that's awesome hey uh john just in wrapping there's uh, two areas that i want to talk about and then we're going to be wrapping up for today uh, on intentionally build 2020. Uh, the, the first area is the importance of having good mentors and uh, the second area and these are the two main things that I really would like uh, those listening to take away. If we, it, you know, if we, if we, out of everything we said, these are the two areas I think where they could have the most growth. Uh, the second being is blocking out 12 90-minute sessions. That these are meetings with yourself, or if you have a leadership team and meeting with you and your key leaders on what we want to accomplish over the next 12 over the next 30 days the next month period of time because i know this 12 great months equals a great year so if we can if we can win in january and win in february and win you know eight, uh, uh march april may june july august september october november and december if we can win every month then we win for the year so if i can i i know john if our organization has 12 good months we had a great year. I don't need to focus on having a great year. I need to focus on having 12 great months. So I just want to, sh I, I want us to just have a, a little bit more of a conversation around those two aspects. And then we'll be wrapping up for, uh, for today and uh, excited to see the success that um, you're going to have in 2020 as you become more intentional and you lead with being intentionally good rather than having good intentions. So John, um, can you talk about the importance of good mentors? Um, you and I both have had phenomenal mentors in our lives. Um, can you talk about the impact it's made and how important it is to to each person getting to the next level in different areas of their life? Okay. Uh, having a good mentor, it really, it's a relationship. I mean, it's even closer than a friendship. Uh, that's how you know you got a really good mentor. They're in your life. Uh, they'll be your greatest cheerleaders and then on the other side the pointed side which a lot of people try to shy away from 
they will also be your best critics, but a little different. They're, they're not antagonists because they're, they're in it for your benefit. And I have to go back because it stands out in my life. My life changed uh, because of one mentor I had and when I shifted back in the 1980s. And this, this guy took a chance on me. I was coming from blue collar work to I wanted to come into management. And I just I didn't want to do uh, what I was doing. And I was working outdoors. I was doing carpentry. I was doing aluminum siding. Back when siding was aluminum. But I was doing all that. And this guy took a chance on me. And he said he just liked my honesty in our interview and stuff. He hired me over a guy who had five years experience in management and it was retail business. And I knew nothing. I knew nothing. And he says, don't worry about it. That means I can mold you because he was going to be an absentee owner. He says, and you'll manage it the way I would. He says, all right. So for the next two and a half years, our relationship, we, we became very close friends. He taught me everything. This guy asked me questions and he asked me why, you know, and he and coming from knowing nothing until finally running the business, uh, doing the, the hiring and the firing and doing the uh, the taxes and the payroll and the overhead and managing all of that stuff taught me marketing. I was buying products for the stuff and for the company and so on and so forth, teaching me all of that. This turned into a relationship that went on until he passed about two years ago we were very good friends close friends all of those years changed my life so having a mentor in your life uh will touch on things personal your personal then you have to be willing to go there because they're all about making you a better person and i watched how his family functioned and so i started to make those changes as well so the i, I just can't put a price on having a good mentor because they'll ask you the questions that you might know, but you'll never ask yourself. Because some things might be painful to bring up. And when you fail, a mentor, because they're for you, they'll ask those difficult questions of let's get into the failure, why that failed. Why? Because it's going to turn you into success. So I can't uh, say enough about mentoring. And then also you can have mentors you never met. And that's the thing with, with John Maxwell. And I know I met him. I, I've spoken with him. But... Chad, you and Daniel met with him for a month, which that's great. And uh, but he's been in part of my life, impacted my life since the the 1990s. And any organizations that I work in, I bring a, a lot of what I've learned from him, the personal uh, calls uh, with his high level team members of his, and and so on. His teaching, his coaching, his mentoring calls. Uh, again changed my life and even though you know he didn't know me personally like we're friends uh but the whole idea is in those calls he made you think about getting mentors and learning from people who've been there done that and they could pass it on to you so you can't go it alone because you and i already know what we know but you can't go to the next level already knowing what you know you need to trust yourself to somebody who's credible and trustworthy and can keep a confidence and let them pour into you what they know. And I guarantee you, you'll see it. In less than a year, you'll see it. It'll change your life. It'll change your family. It'll change your company. So I can't say enough about getting a good mentor. No, that's, that's dead on point. You know, and I just want to add one little thing, John, and then I want to jump to that last topic. Um, sure. With mentors, uh, one of the things to realize also is you could have mentors in many different areas. So you could have a mentor in your area of your health. You could have a mentor in the area of your marriage. You could have a mentor in the area of relationships. You could have a mentor in the area of business, a mentor in finances. So a lot of the times when people think of a mentor, they think of a per one all encompassing person. Um, I, you know, I I'll share with you that I have, had multiple mentors over my career um, and each one of them have spoken into my life and directed my life differently. So uh, for those of you that are listening, uh, mentorship is so important and you may have right now, I have three or four different people um, that are mentoring me and it's allowing me the ability to grow and develop as a person um, because I have these people um, really speaking into my life in different areas. 
Excellent. Makes you a well-rounded yeah. person. It's true. Hold on one second. It does make you a well-rounded person, and it's not easy, John. You know, you've been doing it for so many years. Um, there's there's two parts. There's being the mentor, but then there's also being the mentee. So we're talking in this capacity of being a mentee, but I know you're a mentor to many people. I'm a mentor to many people. A lot of the people that are listening to this call are mentors to many people. Um, I think the responsibility of being a mentor is tremendous. Um, I don't say yes to being a mentor very often because I know that when I say yes, that means they get access to me and they have they have access to me. And sometimes it's going to be in times that I don't want them to have access because I want to do my own personal thing. Or, um, but being a mentor requires that you're you're there, that you're giving them access to you. Yeah. Yep, choose carefully, or you have to know, you have to see it in the other person that you're going to add value to them, and and you can see the potential in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's true, you got to be careful because they have access to you. So yeah, but it's good. You know, and then and then regarding you know, you <laughs> in our conference room, uh, those of you who've been there, uh, it says be humble in our conference room, and that's a reminder. It's a reminder to me, it's a reminder to John and a reminder to Danielle and our team that just because you've been successful in an area or you can help someone in an area, it doesn't mean that that makes you better than anyone. And That's right. um, I, I say being a humble mentor is so important because a lot of times people look up to you because of your success in an area. Yeah. But really, but this, is, this is the key really recognizing that the success in the area that you're having and you may be mentoring someone in really is more about momentum than it is about talent. Yeah. And, and I, I want to speak on that for a moment. In 2020, your goal should be to have positive momentum. You see, momentum makes you look better than you are when it's going positive. And it makes you look worse than you are when it's not going well. And part part of manage part of make uh, building an intentional 2020 is really allowing momentum to take you and yeah. do anything possible to get momentum. Anything possible to build momentum because when you have momentum, things run smoother, things feel easier. People enjoy being around each other. And when you don't have momentum, it's, it's a grind. So no. part, part, part of what I look at when I'm mentoring someone is I look at how do I help them get momentum? And how do I make them realize that when things are working really well, it's not because they're that great. Now, I don't want to put them down. I want them to know that they're good. But I don't want them to ever get so inflated that they believe that their results is purely because of them. Their results is because momentum is making them look better than they are. And there were, there were times in their life when they didn't have the momentum and they look worse. Moment, momentum is a, is a game changer for 2020. If you get momentum positive, it'll impact and tremendously transform your leadership, your business, and everything that you're doing. To that point, and I, just, I, I want to um, just wrap up. We've got about another five to ten minutes. To that point, I want to talk about blocking out 12 90-minute sessions to prepare for the upcoming month. So if we're talking about momentum, the one thing that we do that helps us get the most momentum is, and John alluded to this earlier, is we have 12 90-minute planning sessions, and we do this at the end of every month. So if, 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 we look, if you were to look at our calendar, you would see that the, I think it's January 30th, is our planning session to plan for February. And then right. February 26th, I think it is, is our planning session. I think it's 26th off the top of my head, to plan for March. So I would encourage you to block out 12 90-minute planning sessions for your division, if you work at a company, for your organization, if you own the company. 12 90-minute sessions that allow you to clearly articulate what are our biggest rocks, what are our goals, who's responsible for what. And then this is the last part, and we mentioned this earlier in the call, 
we spoke about success consciousness. Where are our opportunities? Because success requires intentionality. So if we know where we're looking for our opportunities, then that's where we're going to be able to capitalize and have a higher probability of winning. And I'm all about probability because I believe that if we're going to do something, why would we want to do something and not give ourselves the best chance to win? Right. Blocking out these 12 90 minute sessions with either you and your team or you and a couple of your key leaders will give you the <laughs> best chance of winning in 2020 and it'll help you be intentional for 2020. Right. So with that said, I'd encourage you when you get off the call today, go into your calendar, block out that time, put it in, because if you don't do that, everything else, remember we started our call with sand, pebbles, and water. Those are the things in, in our business and in our life that's going to fill in all of our time. If we don't put in those 12 major rocks, those 12 planning sessions, everything else is going to fill it. And, and I want to wrap up with this. One of the things that we had to do as an organization, going back to what John shared about reflection, is as I reflected back on 2019, I recognized that we did our 12 planning sessions, our prep for upcoming month sessions. But because our calendar was becoming so intense, I, we, we Danielle, me, John, Amory, our team, were putting the time into, we were putting our those meetings and trying to squeeze them in between stuff. And that planning session is so important for the success of our years that it can't be squeezed in. It needed to become a major rock. So in reflecting back on 2019, I realized that we, we, we did them every month, but we didn't make them a major rock that they should be. So in 2020, we added that to our list of preparing for 2020 to make sure that that's in our calendar before anything else. So now, now it's in our calendar and the pebbles, the sand and the water is going to fill around that instead of us trying to squeeze that in between. Yeah. So I just, I, I, I love, you know, John and I and our team, we love spending time and investing in leaders that impact more leaders that impact organizations that, that become love driven organizations. Um, just want to share a few things before we wrap up. Um, for those of you who are on our call or will be listening to this recording in the future, you should, you, you should, you could, I would highly encourage it to follow us on our social media channels. So our social media, we have a YouTube channel, we have Instagram, Facebook. So on our YouTube channel, every week we're putting new videos up of stuff like this where you can come in and listen to it. You can share it with your friends. You can share it with those that are on your team, short little videos. Um, some of them are 15, 20 minutes, um, but those, all, all of that can be found at our YouTube channels at Lions Pride Leadership. Uh, if you're not receiving our weekly emails, we have weekly emails that go out, which are weekly videos, uh, weekly newsletters. If you're not receiving them, I'd encourage you to go on lionsprideleadership.com. Uh, there'll be a drop down banner that comes up probably within 10 seconds or so. You could put your first name, your last name, and your email in there. You'll be on the list and you'll get all of our, our greatest leadership content and our newest stuff that we're putting out. Um, and we just want to encourage you that 2020 will always come back down to the success of 2020, 2020 will come back down to this. And this is in wrapping. Are you choosing to have good intentions? Which would mean I loved what they shared today. Some of the stuff they shared was really good, but you never make it never makes it into your calendar. You never change how you're operating. Or are you going to be intentionally good? For those of you that are on the call that are choosing to be intentionally good, then you're going to go put in 12 90-minute sessions into your calendar for planning for your upcoming month. You're going to be intentional with choosing who your mentors are. You're going to be intentional with choosing who you're mentoring. You're going to clearly articulate what the major rocks are for your personal and professional life. And lastly, you're going to make every day your masterpiece. You're going to make sure that every day you're making it your best day ever. Because if you do that for 365 days, you're going to have a great year. God bless you. We believe so much in you. We believe that, that 
whatever you put your mind to, you can accomplish if you're going to be intentionally good. Have a great year. God bless. And we're here. Have a great day. Bye-bye.